All right, I haven't shown too much on this truck. It's a 70 cab over that we made this extension piece to match up to a sleeper. He's bound it down, loaded up and trucking. Are we gonna do what they say can't be done? It has some anemic motor in it. We swapped the axles to disc brake axles. New drive lines, fuel tanks, fuel injection, AC, new wiring, new column, different shifter. You know, everything was sandblasted, painted the inside, powder coated wheels and tires. Anyways, we're gonna get these pieces together here. Got a roll back off of this old turd. And the Kenworth sleeper that are all gonna magically line up to the measurements I made. So let's see what happens. Today we're going to have a tour of Opposite Prime, low horsepower in disguise. Oh, this is Jared. How's it going? He is an electrical madman. Look at all them wires he did. He's a gambler of 500s. He's a appraiser of homes. Mm -hmm. He's a man with many degrees he's a guy with a great smile yeah you forgot cutie and he's a cutie yeah and that cutie has done massive amounts of wiring don't don't judge it by the mess we're There's straightening still, things out right now yes so we're, we're just we ran everything and now we're gonna go through clean stuff up and loom it so it's it looks crazy right now because i've pulled the slack out of a lot of stuff but it's going to be butamous, as butamous as the rest of Mopar Bob's 69, I believe, D700. The D stands for delicious. It did start off just kind of a little cab and then um, added on actually a section of a Toyota motorhome. And then some of this was just fabricated, like this little section here, this little bit here, these little bits. This is a Kenworth sleeper, rollback off of that old square body in the background there. The only thing we have of the original D700 here is the cab and the frame. The axles are off of, I believe, a Schwann's man, like C5500. The rest is just pieced together. All right, on this sunny day in September, we're gonna kinda go from the back to front here. Jared's gonna tell you about it. I'll chime in. But there has been so much work into this truck. It has so many little things that are like kind of a preventative or 
alternative or an accessory, but it just has massive amounts of all of it. One of the big things is the hydraulic setup. This was the original pump that was on the square body and it was driven off of the motor. But since we're running a small block Mopar in here, it's, we had to figure out a different way to set it up. So we've got this set up kind of like you would an air compressor for an air ride setup, but we've just got an electric motor that's running the hydraulic pump and then it runs through the filter system and the, we've got the recovery tank and everything right there. The air pump setups that we only do here at Night Shift Customs. And then moving forward, you've got two fuel tanks and then we've got the manual switch valve right here. Here's the remote oil filter setup. We're running dual filters on it. The remote setup helps with capacity as well as adding more filters. You can also see through there, there's actually an external trans filter as well. Yep, filters on filters. Yes. And then we've got some little side lights that you can activate from the sleeper. Bob had us do that. Yep. Um, these are kind of neat. They're new from Holly. They're actually kind of like those new tape measures that kind of send a little laser across to um, tell you the measurement, but they actually send a laser down to tell you your fuel level, which is pretty awesome, especially in these style tanks that we have here. To open up the sleeper, there's a little gear shift lever right there. That's off of our original D700, so that's the other thing that's off the original truck. And then powertrain is a small block Mopar. It's a 408 stroker kit. And it's running a fast EFI system. We have an HE HEI style distributor. We got the original radiator. We were able to fit everything together with again, which was pretty amazing because we had to move the motor down and a few different things when we switched to this one. You can kind of see all our coolers there we have oil coolers, trans coolers, um, AC condenser. Um, there's our computer for the Easy EFI. It also has these, they were using these on the older um, cab overs where they used a spring to do the lift the cab up and it actually works extremely well. Kind of with the ease, you know what I mean? We'll see how it does once there's an interior in there but for right now it's pretty smooth yeah I think it kind of evens out you know you put something in the front put some in there put some in there and it all kinds of evens out on the distribution of the weight then up here we have the under dash AC unit and then dash with a bunch of custom JEGS gauges and then we'll have this radio set up with his backup camera. We'll, we'll have that set up probably to run all the time. And then this little switch panel is to run his auxiliary lights, his strobes, and even the hydraulic pump. So we're just finishing up the wiring on this panel. These are pretty neat because they're waterproof and you can put them in nice small spaces. And then these are just micro switches that then trigger the relays down at the junction box. There's a lot of relays. We got a lot of um, under dash lights, cab lights, uh, chicken lights, blinker lights, LED lights, fog lights, fog lights. Um, look at that little guy. He was a patriotic little bastard that we got in there. New door seals. The inside was all painted in this. I did a hot rod flats uh, gray on the inside. I thought it'd be kind of nice on the interior to have it be satin because or flat because it's kind of softer. It doesn't have a you know normally even from the factory these were gloss inside and it's just kind of not an interior kind of thing I guess. Uh, tilt column that we got from Jags. You can see. Got about 10 fuse blocks. <laughs> There's three under here. We got another one under here. So we got another one under here. And this is our mega fuse panel and isolator setup. This so, is a big deal that Jared worked on. Yeah, it's been it's been kind of a pain. And then here is the fuse and relay block for that for that other switch panel. 
and it'll mount right up there. But how we have this set up is this isolator allows the two batteries to be independent. So the one alternator comes in and charges into here and then it has two outputs that charge out to the batteries independently. So let's see. This battery right here is the primary battery for running the truck and starting the truck. And then this battery runs the sleeper and also runs the hydraulic pump. That way if you are loading or unloading a car and one battery was drained down fairly low just from running that pump for a long time, then your starting battery is going to be unaffected. And then in here is pretty fun. We've got little cubby lights in there. And then this fuse block is just for the sleeper side. And then we've got this 110 box because we've got a generator to run the AC unit. Currently we're running the AC off the shop power because you can just plug in, which is pretty cool. So if he's at anywhere with a outlet, kind of hook up even like an RV spot, he can plug this uh, sleeper in and sleep in comfort through the night without running his generator. Try to show you underneath here. We have a dual exhaust all the way out the back and then custom done drive lines um, by Lee here in St. George, um, Best Deal Spring. Uh, both axles are disc brake axles, so we switched it to a newer um, Chevy, uh, like a Kodiak or C5500 brakes system. That runs off of this long rod that comes up from the brake pedal, comes all the way into here. And so this is actually where your brake reservoir is. That's also on a Hydro Boost system. The Hydro Boost system is going to run our brakes and our giant steering ram with this, that this truck came with actually factory. It's a crazy system, has this crazy, this is like a bell valve or something like that. Anyways, the valve can actually fill if you tried to turn it one way and the pressure of the ram, it'll actually flip the valve in there. And if you go back the other way and it fills the tension from your turn in the tire, it'll flip the valve the other way so you have the power assist in both directions. We have our other tank here. As you can see, they have two lines plus a vent. And also our valve has two lines. So it can actually send the return fuel back to the same tank it's drawing from, which is pretty cool. Um, I didn't want to mess with an electric valve. Manual valves just seem a lot better with all the experience I have of electric valves not working. Probably because I owned a bunch of square body Chevys, but might be different on a different truck. There's these little blocks that hold up the front and kind of rack that so if it was to try to lift up, accident, whatever, it's going to hold that deck down. Had to put these big mounts on here for the rams for the wrecker bed, new hydraulic lines, our valve system for the, the wrecker bed. Bob came up with these lights from some Euro something or other. I put a hitch on here for them, newer style trailer brakes or trailer lights. Um, our, there's our dual exhaust ran out the opposite side of our controls, put on these happening patriotic mud flaps. Oh, and one thing I really want to show you, it's super patriotic on our, our truck here. USA on top of the cab. I decided to do that, that was kind of a surprise to Bob kind of deal. I don't know if you can see them on this side. Maybe there. Anyways, there's uh, 50 ghost stars on each side of the, the sleeper. Custom little LED lights on the back. I made this light bar kind of thing up on top that holds the beacons and the work lights on the back. Jared has those all nicely wired up and it actually has a waterproof plug on there so you could 
take it off if it need to be serviced or something along those lines. Still have some touch up to do. Still needs oil in it. What else? And then in here we set up a, a switch panel for him. Oh yeah. And so he's got a switch for some interior lights and he's also got a 110 light here for when he's on shore power and then he can activate his exterior lights from this switch here. So if he wants to go out at night, he can just kick those on and he's got lights on the back and lights on the sides there. When his lot lizard is knocking on the door, he can turn on the light for him. And then we also set up just a USB charging port. So we've got USBs, 12 volt power, 12 volt power, and then you can keep an eye on, on your volt gauge there. Originally there was this ugly like, uh, what was it faux wood grain yeah it was some wood painted metal that every was... trucker knows what i'm talking about yeah it was ugly so we uh, jared updated it with this sleek black yeah and then the sad thing is <clears throat> i might have to figure it out but the light on this switch doesn't light up because we're ground side switched on this and so this just gives ground to the relay the benefit of doing that is that you can have multiple switches so that we could add other areas that he could add another switch. It, it works kind of like your dome light setup. And that's that super smart shit I'm talking about that he does. This guy. This guy. Da, da, da. And then we set him up. Besides having the AC unit, we also set him up with an outlet here and then up on either sides of these cubbies. He wants to set up like a little TV in here and then he can run his charger offshore power if he wants. All sorts of little doodads. I made a extra big DOS boot reservoir for our power steering because we do have a lot of fluid for all this. You can see our coolers a little better on that side there. Just a difficult truck to work on. It has, you know, with the cab over and with trying to get, you know, everything has to pass through right down in this little area. Like you can see, like, there's that brake pedal and that bar that runs all the way back into the brake system. I had to multiply it with that little lever thing there just to get the proper amount of uh, throw on our brake system back there. But just a tremendous amount of stuff on this vehicle to get all the comforts and I don't know what do you what do you want to call it just massive amounts of accessories yeah is basically what it ended up being yeah and even so the cab over style even makes the electrical a little bit harder because everything has to run forward to move down to the pivot point and then because we have a moving bed and a moving cab that's another big reason why we set up that mega fuse panel. That way all of our high voltage wires are, are separated and also protected. Because if there is a pinch somewhere, if something does get caught and burns up a wire, we can isolate that section and keep the truck going, but just shut down that one section. Yeah. Just all those pinch points with all the stuff that moves, it's just... It adds this whole um, other deal on just doing wiring. You can't. It, it adds feet of wiring just to just to get it through the hinge point. Um, I I don't know how many miles of wire. There's miles of wiring, yeah. for sure. It's a lot. I think there's probably, if I had to guess, an easy, easy thousands thousand dollars worth of wiring just straight wire. That's not like a wiring harness or a thing, just wire. But this is Bob's super Mopar Holland. Rig. American dream machine. Yes. Yes. The Eagles scream when you open the door. He's a great guy. I give him a lot of hell because he deserves it. But, um, he is an awesome dude. He has a lot of Mopar cars, some really neat stuff and this is just going to be an awesome rig for him to take him to the shows and whatnot. He's pounded down, loaded up and trucking.
Are we gonna do what they say can't be done? 